We have a great show for you today. It is jam-packed. We're talking Thursday night football, but primarily we're looking at all of the players that you're holding your breath over, saying, do I trade these players? Do I trade for these players? Do I hold on to these players? And we're going to dive deep on all the all the players we don't want to answer questions about. We're doing it for you. Make sure you like this video, subscribe, and enjoy the show. The Fantasy Footballer Studio is brought to you by Samsung Galaxy. Visit Samsung.com to learn more. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh! Welcome in. Wednesday, November 9th, Jason Moore, Mike, the fantasy hitman. <laughs> Jason Moore and, <laughs> and Mike. And Mike. The, 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 the. No, it's Andy's it's here too. The, That's me. The thing about my name, it is so unique that you could just, it's like Brittany. Just start calling me Mike. People will know. Which Mike I'm talking yep. about? There's yep. only one. It's like like Madonna and Mike. Yeah, Mike. <laughs> Have you ever uh, gone by Michael? Uh, I was Michael until, because uh, that was the, the name that my, my parents gave me. Right. And then I got into third grade. And you, you made the change? And I made the change. Yeah. Uh, there was just always other Michaels mm -hmm. in my class. You I mean, that's my father's name. <laughs> But it's like big, big shocker uh, at that time. Just Michael's everywhere, as we still are. And I was tired of it. I said, okay, I'm third grade. I'm Mike now. It's very interesting because I made the transition from Andrew to Andy in third grade. Oh, that's that's when we became men. <laughs> yeah, this one we decided to take our own. I Wait, did as well around third grade. I made the transition from, from Jason to you. From <laughs> From Randy to Jason. Yours is a little more extreme. Right. Yeah, yeah. also strange. Sure. It's a middle, middle name yeah. to first name. Um, do what, your is, what is the thought process? your parents process? still call you no, Michael? They, they, they call me Michael. They make the change? Yeah, they were very surprised, I'm though, still Andrew to my parents. At the uh, In third grade, when they went to the, uh, the parent-teacher uh, conference, the yeah. meeting, and they were, like, talking about Mike, <laughs> my mom was like, What? Oh, he was, yeah. she found out? That's how she found it out? Was, it was under the radar. Hey, Brooksy, do yeah. your parents, do they still call you Brooklyn? No, they call me Brooksy. Mm. Okay. I think you should start going by Brook. Ooh. Just shorten it. Just, I've I don't, gotten he, that plenty in my life. Oh, you so. have? And, oh, yeah. And that wasn't, uh, you didn't like it? No, you got to have that S in there. Right. Because mm, right. there's more than one Brook. Brooks Robinson. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, that was a great start to the show. <laughs> Welcome in, ride or die, NFL trade talk, uh, as in news, and then we'll talk trades. Fantasy trades. Yeah, fantasy trades. Thursday night preview today, some mailbag. Couple of things here at the top. Spotify Live today, 3 p.m. Pacific, Ooh. 6 p.m. Eastern. Get ready to party. The party room. And then congratulations to the current Megalobowl leader. <gasps> They're back. The Shark. From, Wait. from Jaws 3D is back on top, 18-0. and 0. Can't keep a good shark down. Almost 1,500 points. Wow. So congrats. Uh, I mean, you haven't won, but you're in the lead. Yeah, I mean, r in reality, you're going to get in the playoffs. You'll be out the first round. But this is really <laughs> impressive what you've done so far. Uh, I also have a, a, a miniature PSA I want to give for the Megalobowl right now. Okay. okay. It just feels necessary. We're heading into week 10. Um. And I just want to address like trades in the Megalobowl. This is the trade episode of the fantasy football, which makes sense. And so we uh, we have a wonderful commissioner, Ray Smith, who who takes care of uh, a lot of what takes place in these Megalobowl leagues. And the Megalobowl is extremely popular. I think about 20,000 people playing it every year. And uh, Papa Josh helps out as well. But I just want to appeal to the sensibilities of, of the w mostly wonderful Megalobowl players to please, please don't try to process disgusting collusion trades in the Megalobowl. And I know that it's few and far between. We see them, we reverse them, mm -hmm. and if we, for some reason, wouldn't have seen it and you go on to win, you don't win. 
Mm-hmm. So you you can't win by cheating, even if you got away with it. You're just wasting everyone's time and 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 being a turd. And we don't want you yeah. to be a turd. So which is one of the rules of the Megalobowl. Don't be a turd. That's right. That's right. So uh, just just be aware that we have our eyes on all those leagues. And this is as much to the other people in the leagues that if you witness one of those things take place, please reach out to us. We will fix it. We are very anti-veto as a uh, podcast. We don't believe in the veto. But in the Megalobowl in particular, we are going to turn something. Like if the 12th place team trades their four best players for the four you know, worst players on the first place team, that's not going to happen. That, not in my house. No. So uh, just be be good people. Yeah. Which most of you are. But uh, the, the, the turds out there. We smell you. White. <laughs> White better. Uh, also, uh, a more just like awareness of Megalobowl. Make sure you know what the rules are. Uh, because Megalobowl.com. It, it's a gigantic tournament. And uh, so you we kind of have to alter some things. So waiver additions. They get turned off at some point, Jason. Am I? I'm speaking not out of turn, right? Yeah, the waivers are locked in the playoffs. No ads will be allowed in the playoffs. So make so sure prepare. you are. Yes, be prepared for that. Yeah, and if you be have any questions, <laughs> if you've got questions on those rules, megalobowl.com, we've got kind of the, the breakdown. Just uh, read a little bit more than you have in the past. Yeah, trade deadline week 11. So keep keep yourself ready to go. The teams that win are they know the rules and they yep. and they play by them. So uh let's do some ride or die. Ride or die, presented by Chevrolet. Well, Jason and I made opposite decisions on all three picks last week. And so Jason won them all. <laughs> so yep. if you want to ride with somebody, let's ride. Based on recent history, ride with Jason. Fuckland. Stupid Antonio Gibson. Let's ride. Yeah, he was the only. Jason was the only one not to believe in Antonio Gibson. Kyle Pitts, uh, and the only one, well, not the only one to believe in Geno Smith. Mike did as well. But this week, heading into Week Ten, ride or die predictions. Brooks, what do we have? All right, guys. First one is Juju Smith Schuster. Versus the Jaguars. Ooh. Will this trend continue? Top 15 fantasy wide receiver. He's done it three weeks in a row. I, I was surprised when I was looking into this. Um, he's He's got two games on the season where he hasn't, where he's had fewer than eight targets. Since week three, he's basically on pace for 140 targets. I, I, I'm really surprised how involved he's been because, you know, when, when we saw the first two weeks, like week two, he had 10 yards. It just seemed like, oh, yeah. The dumb. longer you play with Marquez Valdez-Scantling, the more you target other <laughs> receivers. And Sky Moore has been not impressive as well. I Spoiler alert, I'm riding here, and he's my start of the week this week. Oh, Ooh, okay. Neato. He I, ha- go ahead. I will, uh, I will once again take the opposite of Andy. I will choose uh, die here solely because, uh, you know, last, t- last week six teams on by. He squeaked in as the wide receiver 15. I do think he's a fine play. That's not to say that um, it's a bad matchup or that he is someone you should bench at all. Uh, in PPR, he should be good. But I do think they'll get Kadarius Tony more and more involved and you know more competition on the week. I will, I will choose Die. Yeah, I'm going to go with Die as well. The matchup is very, very juicy. Uh, but heard a uh, good friend of the show, J.J. Zacharyson, was talking about the usage of Juju of you, okay, last three weeks, huge yardage. He's been fantasy relevant. You would think, oh, well, maybe maybe they're going downfield more with Juju. It is, in fact, the opposite. They are they're coming closer into the line of scrimmage as in fewer uh, high air yardage targets. So that's very fascinating that he's starting to thrive in that, which was, you know, the last time we saw him in Pittsburgh where he was doing pretty well. That's kind of how they were using him. But top 15 is – it's a little too too juicy for me, so I'll say die. But I'm with Jason. that he's, he's still a good play. There's a lot of number confusion on my eyeballs now in Kansas City because mm-hmm. Juju Smith-Schuster wears number nine in okay. Kansas City, but he wore number 19, which is now the number that Kadarius Tony is wearing in uh. Kansas City. 
And so you see 19 and you think maybe it's Juju. Um, they run him like a uh, uh, tight end. I mean, they run him like Travis Kelsey. They, him and Kelsey will go run mirror routes and then Mahomes will choose to throw it to Juju sometimes instead of Kelsey. Uh, Devontae Smith is our second uh, ride or die prediction. Brooks, what's the line you have for us here? All right, uh, at Washington, or at least against the uh, Commanders, 70 yeah, receiving home. yards. Home versus the Manders. The Manders defense has been much better recently. Um, not great, but better. That being said, they are the number one best defense over the last six weeks against tight end. On the season, if you adjust for schedule, they are number three. They you know, so I think they, they match up well against Dallas Goddard. I don't like how high this line is. It makes me like, I, I wish I could get this at like a 65, but I'm going to ride. Cause I do think Ooh. Devonta Smith has a good game. So is I, that because you traded for him? It is not because I mm -hmm. traded for him. There is hope. Mm -hmm. I mean, my uh -huh. hope he has a great game because <laughs> I traded for him. Uh, but I do think that it, it lines up uh decent in this matchup for Devonta Smith. Mike. Uh, let's see. So over his game log, we, we saw him hit over this threshold in week five against Arizona, week two against Minnesota, and week three against you know the Manders. So that's when he had that huge game where he was the wide receiver one with the, about 169 yards and a touchdown. But it's it's too high. It's too high for me, so I'm gonna, going to die. I'm going die as well. Chris yeah, God, take that, Jason. I don't, God, I don't blame you. I right? didn't trade for Smith, so I'm out. I, I feel like the line should have been like 62 and a half, but whatever. Uh, what's done is you done. You mean so that we could all – oh, you would have gone a more comfortable ride. Right, right. Uh, yes. A more lug luxurious. Yes. Right now it's bumpy. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I want a smooth ride. Chris Godwin versus Seattle. Brooks set the Oof. line at 12 fantasy points. I abstain. <laughs> <laughs> he has twelve. He had twelve point five in week six against Pittsburgh. It's the only game he's done it this year. He hasn't scored a touchdown. Uh, I'm gonna ride. I am pretty bullish on Tampa Bay this week after the comeback victory over the Rams. I know it's been a rough ride, as bumpy as it gets. Yeah, there's no shocks. No, this ride is. I mean, it's gonna. You might end up with a concussion, <laughs> but I'm gonna. I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna ride. So. I was blown away looking at how many targets Chris Godwin has had comparatively. I, I mean, the since so you know he plays in Week One, which was shocking, right? We yes. did not expect yep. Chris Godwin Godwin to be ready, and then early on in that game, you know, he only played thirty one percent of the snaps because he injured his hamstring, was out for a month. Since he has been back, he is on pace through those six games. For a seven for a full season pace of one hundred and seventy five targets, that's that's great. He's got zero touchdowns, and I think we're going to talk about this a little bit tomorrow. But if that that is that is an outlier, I I will ride with Chris Godwin. I think he gets a touchdown soon, hopefully this week. Since I'm since I'm riding, and I do believe that Chris Godwin is. Uh, you know, for for today's episode, he is a really good trade for target. He's still coming back off that injury. We know it takes time for these guys to to just get up to their previous uh, production from the injury. He's got his bye uh, next week, so I think the rest of the season, Chris Godwin's going to be a really really solid play. It's so bizarre what is happening in Tampa Bay. Of you, you'll have Tom Brady looking just completely washed you have Chris then you have the, the what looks like miscommunication between these guys bad ball placement drops all over yeah and then and then the receivers start dropping when Tom Brady's actually hitting it's so bizarre uh but that line will go I, I mean I have to ride for my team uh but 12 and a half or 12 points if we could just get the one touchdown this week and we're maybe we'll get that uh get some bonjour luck here for uh for Germany all right, that was Ride or Die presented by Chevy Silverado. Learn more about Chevy Silverado at Chevy.com. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA Insurance. One of the players we're going to talk about today is Leonard Fournette because I think so much pressure has been put on the passing game in Tampa Bay. And so when you have that much pressure on you, that many attempts, no running game, 
people start to press, you get drops, you get um, miscommunications. I don't know. Uh, it's at least where I place some of the blame beyond Brady. All right, news and notes. Josh Allen dealing with a sprained right elbow. It will limit him this week. Not considered major, but definitely a solid, like, normal amount of questionable for week 10 like actually questionable yeah I, I think it's 50 50 that he plays you need to be prepared to be without him that means you need to be prepared um not only if you are the Josh Allen manager you're going to start digs no matter what but like Gabe Davis is a Josh Allen creation this is why I love him if jo if Josh Allen was not playing you know I would like to pivot and have a different uh different player in my lineup yeah okay uh, John Harbaugh said he expects Gus Edwards back for week 11. Oh, beep, beep. It's going to be complicated. I mean, that's that's two weeks from now. It's one of the benefits of uh, having Kenyon Drake go this past week. He was great, and then you get more time for that hamstring. Jamison Williams, Lions coach Dan Campbell, says he hopes to get him back in December sometime. Okay. Cool. Well, cool. The news has been all over the place. We've got um, an amazing uh, – lineup of news in this show doc all that happened on the second of the month so the next update will come december 2nd apparently when he's out for the season when he, yeah uh originally he was uh, back in march way ahead of schedule to return uh then in august it looked like november uh then in september it was going to accelerate the timeline and then the the lions lost so many games that i think they're like let's just take it slow with him uh sometime in december but, I, I I mean, he's not a usable fantasy asset for redraft. Might he negatively affect your confidence in Amon Ross St. Brown in the clutch part of your fantasy playoffs? He wouldn't for me. Uh, I mean, maybe he comes out and he's just an electrifying rookie wide receiver off of an ACL in his, you know, those first couple games at, at the end of a season. But if anything to me – it would just help the offense take some of the pressure off and get Amon Ra back in the end zone. Yeah, I mean, week one, DJ Chark had a really good game stretching the field, doing good things, and, and uh, Amon Ra also did. Yeah, you don't want a uh, Elijah Moore situation with the rookie right. Garrett Wilson. Uh, Colts assistant quarterbacks coach uh, Parks Frazier, 30 years old, I believe, will call offensive plays under Jeff Saturday. Saturday. Okay. He used all his words up yesterday. I have no comment. Uh, okay. Well, um, there you go. What, what is this piece of news you have here, Kyle? Uh, Jeff Saturday plays against Devontae Adams, and it was confirmed a couple weeks ago he's on his fantasy team. <laughs> I have to imagine uh, that Jeff Saturday is has – relinquished control of his fantasy roster or has he or, or else he's taking it to the next level to win guys <laughs> look we're not gonna double team Devonte adams this week we're gonna kind of i think he i think let's put our rookie quarterback on him really make him show, show so how good he is we're going cover zero every play so we don't need to talk about jim mercy saying that he knows he doesn't know how to make sausage he has no idea what goes into sausage but he does know how to build a uh, NFL team. Yes, yeah. there's an endless list of quotes from that press conference. I, I, what was the? He also had one where he said, you know, they're, you know, they're not making rockets. You know, they're just <laughs> like when it was like talking about Jeff Saturday's ability to coach teams. Like it's not building rockets. It's it's just football. So it's somewhere in between like sausage and, and rockets. rockets. Right. Okay. That's where just, football lands. Football is scientifically speaking somewhere between making sausage and building a rocket. Okay. And and to be fair, I think that's true. Right. I think it is more complicated than making a sausage, less complicated than building rockets for outer space. So, well said, Irsay. <laughs> All right. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Let's talk trades. Let's talk about it. Welcome in trade segment. Very important trade deadlines on the way. Uh, lots of them are before the week 11 kickoff. Depends on your platform, what you set up. Uh, I know in a couple of my leagues, they are at the end of this week. And then we have a playoff primer episode coming next week. So we're getting you ready to go. I know we're just over the halfway point now in the actual NFL season, but we're well beyond that in the fantasy season. 
And so we are going to talk about the most asked about players and trade candidates that have come through on Twitter and Instagram. Brooks has collected a number of these for us, and we will begin with the dump truck himself, <sighs> this is Leonard rude. Fournette. Really disappointing that the uh, I mean this he has to have been the early season favorite for nickname of the year yeah and this is what he's doing to us yeah he's dumping your team like a truck yes um this is this is a situation where look I wasn't I was looking at starts of the week this week and I looked long and hard at Rashad White. Because okay. I do believe a necessary transition is is coming. Um, we talked about this in the office a little bit yesterday. Leonard Fournette, he has a history of emotional tumult. He's sure. a pretty temperamental player. Then it comes out last week he was extremely frustrated when he was not on a drive that Rashad White was on. He's been under three a carry for three consecutive games. His... Uh, the the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you know, we talk a lot about Najee Harris. Do they make a change? They can, he can't run the football. He can run the ball better than than Leonard Fournette can run the ball right now. Now, Fournette is very valuable in the passing game, which I think necessitates his time on the field. But Rashad White can do that too. And as you attempt to make a transition, you know, this team saved their season last week by beating the Rams. Right. Um, Rashad White has significantly more juice. You do see rookies uh, start to make their move in the second half of the year, and uh, the Athletic came out yesterday and said the momentum is going to be with Rashad White at the end of the season as well. So, from a fantasy perspective, that that's all the kind of prologue of the question: What do you do with Leonard Fournette? What kind of target is he uh, in this offense, and what are your expectations? Because without the rushing ability. He hasn't been a you know any sort of league winner for you. He's, sure. he's he stabilized your team due to pass catching at times, but um, what do you think? And the and the the touchdowns overall are just they're not flowing for Tampa Bay. They're uh, thinking through it like I I believe for Tampa Bay because the passing game is not working, the run game doesn't work. They they, they aren't run to pass. They are pass to run is the, the at least the way that I I feel like Tom Brady operates his offense. For me, Fournette is not a trade at all costs. I'm not just jumping out of a moving car to get away from Leonard Fournette. But we have some interesting ideas here, like from Instagram, uh, from Steven said, should I trade Fournette and Tony Pollard for Dalvin Cook? And to me, that's an upgrade that I would be immediately, immediately taking. Dalvin Cook, I mean, Tony Pollard is, if Zeke is gone, he's crazy good for fantasy purposes, but... The team has already said Tony Pollard or Zeke will be the lead guy again. It will go back to the timeshare. And Fournette is kind of stuck in his what looks like an evolving timeshare. So I would immediately go to Dalvin Cook if I could. Yeah, whenever there is a running back that is that is solid, but I have fears over them, you know, we talk about this. You, you try to trade up at the position. And that's what this is. If you can if you can turn a Leonard Fournette into a Dalvin Cook, that is a clear upgrade at running back. It's hard to trade away Leonard Fournette in general because like right now we're disappointed with his production he is a top 10 running back he's the running <laughs> right. back nine uh his pass catching is a really solid baseline that helps your team I am certainly not trading for Leonard Fournette I'm not paying up to go get him and I don't think that people are really selling him for pennies on the dollar so it's a matter of in your league whether you can convert Leonard Fournette and a piece into a better running back it's um, you know, otherwise, what you know, if you're trading him uh, across the aisle for a wide receiver, then you've got to get someone really, really good to give up a, a solid running back spot. And I, I doubt you. I doubt you get a, a significant enough upgrade at wide receiver. Cordero Patterson. Would yeah. you rather have oh, Patterson man. or Leonard Fournette? He's, that's one where coming off the injury. The age, the, the the frustration in, in the offense in Atlanta, you could pull off potentially the one for one. Yeah, you. I th I think you could. I think that most uh, most people would take the um, Fournette side. So if you wanted Patterson, I think you get that trade to go through. I would stick it out with 
Fournette. Okay, if what? you want to manipulate people, you can go to the number that, you know, the bye weeks are creating a different dynamic when it comes to what you are as a running back. True. I mean, Leonard Fournette is 17 by points per game. He's below Cordero by a significant margin. Cordero's 10 in points per game. So that might be an, an area sure. you could pull it off. Would you rather have Fournette or – well, you answer the Patterson one, but then also throw Mostert in there. Uh, I would – I think I would take the shot on Patterson. Just the, uh, the Falcons' offensive game plan is here to stay at this point to me. And Patterson – Patterson looks good when he's when he's getting the opportunity, getting a little bit more healthy. What was the other – oh, Mostert, I would not. I, I To me, Mostert's arrow is pointing way, way down with the addition of Jeff Wilson. I think that's – it's going to – most are, it moves into pretty much you have to get a touchdown or you might be looking at running back three numbers. They don't pass to him enough, and Jeff Wilson's very capable. But we do have a couple other questions here that we got for some Lions. So, Jason, uh, this is from at Pilgrim DJB, Daniel okay. Jones Burner. Fournette or DeAndre Swift? <laughs> That's <laughs> Which a is – I mean, this Blowing is in my mind. Yeah, that's a really interesting trade because what you're what you're literally doing is you're saying one guy has a has a pretty good floor and his ceiling just isn't there and probably won't be there with Rashad White coming in. But it 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 could it it could come back. Yeah. Touchdowns could go more his way. The other player has a just microscopic floor right has now. A, DeAndre has a five Swift. touch ceiling right now. Right, but his his upside if he gets healthy comes back could be a league winner. Um, personally, when I look at those two players, I'm on the Fournette side. I I I am pretty rather scared on DeAndre Swift. I, I Fournette is a veteran playing for a veteran team. They're but he's buddies with Tom Brady. I don't personally see the transition happening. Um, where Rashad White just takes over, especially in the passing game. He is a very capable pass catcher, but I do think that they will – if you look at the routes run um, numbers, they were drastically still in favor of Leonard Fournette, even though I think he only had like one more carry than Rashad White last week. I'd probably go Swift because I'd be looking to close the deal at the end of the year, try to win a championship, and I I think I'd – try to get the magic from DeAndre yep. Swift. That's uh, how I lean Getting well. healthier. And I'd be a little afraid of that transition, but um, Jamal Williams getting a lot of opportunities right now as well. Oh, man. Just to throw this out there, I know we'll we'll do the playoff primer later, but the Detroit Lions, week 16 and 17, if you get to that deep run in the playoffs, Carolina, Chicago. Oh, that's hello. pretty nice for, pretty league, juicy. for league winning. Yeah, that's pretty good. I did start to – so this is the time of year where, depending on your record, you are glancing at some of that stuff. Yes. And in the uh, – like our Dynasty League, I'm very confident I'll be in the playoffs in that league. And I started looking even at matchups for premier players on your roster where, you know, your quarterback matches. Maybe you have somebody that's kind of locked in. Um, we'll talk through all of those upcoming schedules, but it is – it's time to glance. Mm-hmm. Because your trade deadline is coming for preparation. So, um, got another question for you. One final one about Leonard Fournette, but let's take a quick break before I get to it. Let's go cross positionally here with this final Fournette question. Would you trade him for Amon Ross St. Brown? Say so you're flexing Fournette. This is interesting uh, because, like, <clears throat> I don't have. In in my important leagues, I don't have Amon Ra anywhere. It just it didn't work out with with the ADP and everything for him to end up on any of my teams. Uh, but my opinion, without having Amon Ra St. Brown, is still extremely high. Like I I think he's a great player. the The situation of the Lions is pretty good. Of they can they end up in these shootouts where he's getting you know a ton of targets. His uh his target percentage on the year is twenty six. That's a really healthy percent, uh, and that includes you know two games where he essentially didn't where he played. So it's against him, but he he didn't really get uh, targets because he got knocked out of the game. But is the fantasy community out there? Are they souring on Amon Ross St. Brown? Like even people even ask the question of oh should I should I maybe be trading for this guy? Like it's that's wild to me. Do you guys have Amon Ross anywhere? And is your your viewpoint on him still positive 
because you don't have him on your team, you haven't had to ride these highs and lows. Yeah, I, I have the same viewpoint as you. I still view Amon Ra as a really, really good player. He gets the targets that you know, you know, 10 targets, 9 targets last two weeks. He's been a disappointment the last two weeks, but he's still been a top 30 wide receiver. It's not like he's gone out there and goosed you. I don't think that he ever will. And if they do get into more shootouts around the goal line, now without TJ Hawkins, and I, uh, I like Amon Ra. And so this would... It would have to be an Amon Ra level wide receiver or higher, which I put him, you know, as a like a, a top fifteen wide receiver for sure. Um, I would I would take that trade. Couple tough matchups coming up this week is all right, but uh, the Giants and Buffalo weeks eleven and twelve. Uh, it has been a little disappointing. Um, what about uh, so w you would take him over Fournette? I assume. I yeah. I mean, if you have the running back depth to. To handle this, I'm fine with that trade. Um, is that true, Brooksy? Outside the wide receiver, 28 five weeks in a row. Yeah, the five he's yeah last five that he's. Played. I mean, it, yeah, because it includes you know so week seven against Dallas, 17 percent of the snaps because he got hurt right away, and the I think, game before that, 32 percent of the snaps against New England because he got hurt. And the last two weeks, outside the top 28, is true, but he was, he was 29 <laughs> both weeks. <laughs> So it's like that's a good that sounds a good, that's line. a good line. Yeah, six teams on by last week. Yeah, that it I get it. That's frustrating. I think the bipolar nature of the the offense, where you thought you could count on them as a top scoring offense and then, you know, then they get shut out, that plays a part in the confidence that the fantasy community has in Amon Ra is you don't know which Lions offense is going to show up necessarily. And maybe he needed more of the help on the other side. Jonathan Taylor. Oh, brother. I'm out. You're out on Jonathan Taylor. Of this discussion. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not a not an easy <laughs> one to have. This is the, your opinions on Jonathan Taylor probably need to be strong and will either look really smart or really stupid. That's why I'm out. Good work, boys. Handle it. I was <laughs> asked the question of would you trade Jonathan Taylor away to get Damian Pierce? Pretty much straight up. Oh, gosh. And my answer to that question on Twitter was, like, I don't have strong conviction about knowing where Jonathan Taylor's injury is taking him. When you combine that with offensive line struggles, Sam Ellinger, Jeff Saturday, new play caller, there are so many variables there. And there aren't those variables with Damian Pierce. He's going to get 20 plus touches. He's on yeah, yeah, he he's locked in. He's his his volume is there. He's on a bad team. They're not going to score a bunch of touchdowns, but he's going to get every single carry. And that's where it becomes that's where I start to look at the Jonathan Taylor situation is I found myself begging the fantasy world for 20 touches for Jonathan Taylor again. But even with that You've got major offensive problems. And so I guess, Jason, do you think that <laughs> – you're like, why did you say my name? <laughs> I mean, do you think that this like – Mr. JT over here, you've, you've been the glue holding the faith. All this swamp water mm -hmm. that is uh, what I'm going to refer to the Indianapolis situation. Is there any way he emerges without it all over him? I mean, like – is there a way that he runs runs through it for the rest of this season? Yes, there is. Um, I, I'm confident that there is a path forward. He's obviously a, a very super talented running back. There's yeah. a reason he was the 101 in most drafts. There's a reason he was the running back one last year. Uh, he is awesome. Now, he's injured, and he's in a swamp for sure. Everything is completely up in the air. When you talk about the Damian Pierce, Jonathan Taylor situation, with all the variables around Jonathan Taylor, yes, the ceiling is higher with Jonathan Taylor than the ceiling of Damian Pierce. But the floor and the questions and the weeks that you're waiting, we still don't know if he's risk playing. risk is still a thing. I, yeah, it already happened once. Um, the, the, the idea that the Colts are kind of more in tank mode which I mean that's just a 
you know, some people's theory of hiring a coach with no experience and putting your some inexperienced people. quarterback back there. Maybe some you, people might view that as trying not to win. Maybe you let your uh, superstar Jonathan Taylor sit longer, rest more, yada, yada, yada. The point is his floor is so significantly lower that I, at this point, would take Damian Pierce's known uh, touches – and he's looked great. 27 opportunities, 20, 24, 31, 20, 22. I mean, you know he's getting the ball a ton. He looks great with the ball in his hands. Again, he doesn't have the upside Jonathan Taylor has. But as far as answering the question, is there a path forward for Jonathan Taylor to be very good? Yes. Jeff Saturday is a former center. They tried to hire him as an offensive line coach in the past. He knows that world. If he can come in and improve – this offensive line that was a strength of the Colts. Remember this offseason, how Matt Ryan was going to have finally a good offensive line? Like, I, I know they've, you know, everybody's dealing with injuries, but if they can heal that, Jonathan Taylor gets healthy, and maybe these transactions are made because they're saying this division is winnable. We want to fix it now. We're not going to wait, and it's not a tank job. Absolutely. Jonathan Taylor comes back, becomes the heart, soul, and strength of this team and, you know, is the running back one the rest of the way. But the 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 floor is certainly – you're standing on a trap door, and you know it's a trap door. You could see the outline. <laughs> you just don't know if someone's pulling the handle or not. I, I know if you have Jonathan Taylor, this is a tough position to be in because distancing yourself from what you thought you had and what you might actually have is – that is the hardest thing to do because you are trading him on – a reduction of value. And that feels terrible. Like when you have to accept that somebody isn't what they, you think that they are, that's really hard. Like I, I turned down a trade that included Ramondre and two picks two weeks ago. Why? Because of the promise, the hope, the dream that you get Jonathan Taylor, the original, not this version. Uh, but sometimes you have to make adjustments. Sometimes I, you have to accept the reality so that you can survive. Yeah, I will say, um, before we get into some specifics on who we would trade Jonathan Taylor for, what we would maybe look to um, uh, acquire him with, in a dynasty league, Jonathan Taylor's value is still outrageously high, and teams at this point in the season, if he is on a team that has a chance at winning a championship and you are more in rebuild mode, he's a player that was not available that you could try to actually go acquire – because even if he sucks the rest of the season, he doesn't get healthy. They don't fix their issues. He is a super young, talented running back that they will be building this franchise around. So I would certainly be trying to trade for him in Dynasty sure. if you're in that situation. So where were you at with, with Pierce or Jonathan Taylor? Are you saying I, like I if, would take the Pierce side. Okay, so if you have Pierce, you wouldn't trade him for Taylor? I would not. Okay, I think after hearing you guys lay it all out, if I had Pierce... If I can trade for Johnny Taylor, but also another running back who's at least going to get touches, you know, so uh, l let me look at the list. Like, how far down do you have to go? I mean, like... Brian Robinson. Yeah, if you, like a Brian Robinson, A.J. Dillon, guys who are not tearing it up right now. Uh, Melvin Gordon. guys like, But you know that they will at least get some touches. So it kind of gives you some insurance as you wait for Jonathan Taylor to come back. It's it's a high, high variance, high upside move because that that can turn into the, the league winning situation. The worst, Jason, you laid it out. The worst part of talking about this is I think there's a, when the, when the, the season is done, there will be a definitive answer and you will either be a genius or you will be stupid that you made the move that you traded Jonathan Taylor or traded for him. I will be the side of, I will take Damian Pierce definitively. Okay. Um, I don't think, I think there's a world Jonathan Taylor comes back as completely healthy and Damian Pierce is a better fantasy running back. And then I don't have the injury concerns. I mean, Damian Pierce has been like top 12. Sure. Four times in six weeks. So uh, that's the side I go on with pain, with immense pain, <laughs> but I want to accept the now Jonathan Taylor would you trade him away for Amari Cooper and Najee Harris? No. No, Najee is worse than Jonathan Taylor. Najee might be worse uh, than because Jonathan Taylor playing. sitting. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, I, I, w I would rather have Jonathan Taylor there. If I could turn, if you, like, 
obviously these are all true if in I reverse. Could turn back time. Good. I mean, like, don't discount. I mean, I, I think you're. It's interesting that you're so quick to turn down. Like Amari Cooper's in that trait. Amari Cooper is a top ten wide receiver right now. Gets Miami this week. In a couple weeks, gets Houston. His playoff run is Baltimore, which is a, it's probably not great at this point. But then the Saints and the Manders, and I don't know that that trade is interesting to me because I think you get a big, big wide receiver upgrade, and then you get a a running back who's not tearing it up, but is at least four of his last five playable. games. Najee has been under ten fantasy points. He's had single digit fantasy points, and I is is seemingly actively hurting rosters right now so sure. I, I get getting Amari Cooper but that's not worth it I still believe that Jonathan Taylor will get healthy this season and be good at some point the the worry is is that a month from now like I I, I don't think Jonathan Taylor ends the season as a schlub uh, so what's the technical definition <laughs> of that the technical definition of a schlub yeah. is is someone that scores around 10 fantasy points every week a Najee Right, exactly. Wait, ten is a the 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 it's floor to be a schlub. Yeah, the schlub ten at ten running at, back's nice. Yeah, you got, a, sh a schlub's got to be six or below. Oh man, that's that's too you low. are you are putting a schlub up on a pes pedestal here. Yeah, I, I, that's a very bad. Term. I want some schlubs. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. You, wait, you got do you got schlubs? You'll trade me. 10 yeah, point I want running some schlubs, backs? man. Will, all right, I will accept that. This schlub, guy only gets ten. <laughs> a schlub is <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't even want to know what that makes Brian Robinson, under, but. How about can can it be a jag? A jag is a ten point. No, ten it's just points a guy. Is great. A ten point is a Portis. No, it's not. Yeah. Portis was way better than he was like a, a twelve. You, what? Uh, look, late ten career, points is late your career Clinton, Yeah, ten is nice, man. Ten is okay, but that's not winning me a fantasy week. I I need fifteen from my running back. So if they don't win you a fantasy week, they are a slub. They can't be like a stabilizer. I'm saying, yeah. If every single week I'm just getting ten out of him, it's he's just a guy. I mean, okay. I'm not saying like that. Now, that's destroying my team, but I'm saying it's like now, Mike. He might have a point here. Okay, I'm looking at the points per game totals. Right. And I think I'm elevating 10 a little higher than I think it should be. Give, give us. Here's the names be below 10. Okay. And you tell me. This is a schlub test. Yeah. Okay. Kenyon Drake, 9.6. Kareem Hunt, 9.5. Najee Harris, 9.4. Michael Carter, 9.2. I heard a couple schlubs in there. <laughs> yeah. But you're, you're listing off really hot, cold. Is Raheem Mostert a schlub? He's about to be. He's, well, I mean, well, is David me, Montgomery a schlub? Yeah, yeah. James Conner? No, I, oh, James Conner's there. Damian Harris? James Conner is very interesting we, to me moving forward. We've been talking about uh, Leonard Fournette being disappointing and on a per game basis the being truck. the, the, <laughs> the schlub. Uh, this this the, word better mean what we think it, it does. Means. It means a talentless, unattractive, or boorish person. Okay, phew. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Papa Josh, for example. Oh, you're saying is it oh, is a schlub? Oh, yeah, I saw his eyes. That was that was unkind. He's, he would not hit ten. He's points. not a schlub. Is what I was. Saying. Oh, very yeah. nice, very nice. Wait, he's a ten point player. Oh, he's like a nine point, but nine point six. <clears throat> okay. yeah, so Leonard Fournette, who you know has been disappointing, is the running back seventeen on a per game basis. He's up at thirteen point seven fantasy points per game. He's not a schlub. So I, I think I think I was uh, right. In I my... think he's heading to schlubville. Right. Sure. I think he's got You've... a ticket. Yeah, that's fair. If you, if you believe Rashad White is going to work his way into a 50-50 timeshare or even worse, um, then he certainly... So are you trading Amari Cooper? Slumpville. Would you would you want Amari Cooper and Najee for Jonathan Taylor? If I need wide receiver help, I think that's fair. Amari Cooper is... Uh, Amari Cooper... And, like, I'm not... I'm not an Amari Cooper guy. I've My my take on him heading into the season was if, I, if it turns out that he's terrible, I'll go, eh. If it turns out he's great, I'll go, eh. All but right. right now, he's great. I want to blitz some names, and I just want you to tell me trade for, trade away, or hold, okay? Is this a for Jonathan Taylor? Nope. This okay. is just... No, we're moving forward. Do we, okay. We've got to get to Thursday trade night preview. Trade for, trade away, or hold. Yes, okay. I'm giving okay, you names, okay. and you just tell me what you view them as because okay. they're kind of controversial figures in fantasy. Gabe Davis. Hold, hold. I trade away. Okay. Uh, James Conner. Trade, trade for. for. 
Uh, you guys are both excited about the workload. Yeah, he was the the snaps were right back. It was the hard part with Connor was we didn't know after being injured for a month we didn't know if he would come back into the workload with Eno Benjamin being adequate. But he was right there. He looked healthy and. It, it, not many running backs get that level of, of actual 71 percent of snaps five targets five Beautiful. receptions Beautiful. Will you trade for net for i mean we're we're doing the trade show you got to answer that one no uh high risk i think uh, no no i'm a coward but uh, the point is i think you can get uh, james connor much cheaper than uh, a fournette i think people want to maybe move on from fournette <laughs> I think people might want to move on from James Conner. If you have James Conner, he he hurt you. Najee for Conner. Yeah, give me give me James Conner. Moster for Conner. Give me James Conner. Jeff Wilson for Conner. Conner. James, James Conner. All right, Debo, trade for, trade away, or hold? Debo, hold. Samuel. Hold. <laughs> um, man, that one's tough. He's turned into a balloon. Um, I've seen some trades. One top 20 finish. I've seen some trades where you've where people have traded away Debo for quite a bit and I've loved every single one so I'm going to say trade away. Yeah, the the it feels a little bit like Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, and I'm not saying where you know the talents there, you know how good they are, but you have to hope that they come back into form for the second half. And I'm I'm not saying you need to trade Debo Samuel away. I'm saying that you should test the waters and see if you can get a a big haul for the hope that he can provide. All right, let's do some Thursday night. Thursday night breakdown. Oh, uh, you know it's a good matchup when our graphic was that who was in there? Cordero and DJ Moore. Oh uh, yeah. No quarterbacks to be seen. <laughs> the Atlanta Falcons are four and five. They take on the two and seven Carolina Panthers. The over under is forty four. The Falcons are three point favorites and uh why don't we just mix Ooh. in uh, a little L hurricane? Little, little bit tropical rain. Tropical storm Nicole going to be raining on the parade here. Yeah, what parade exactly? <laughs> the parade of the last time we saw the Falcons and Panthers play uh, just two weeks ago where it was a barn-burning awesome fantasy bonanza. Well, P.J. Walker's going to start again. Marcus Mariota on the other side. We got Cordero Patterson back, and we're going to get Chuba Hubbard back. He had a full practice. Deonta Foreman dominated against the Atlanta Falcons last time out. I believe there was the, in that game they had 10 straight scores between the teams. But Chuba will be back, and Deonta Foreman was bad last week. So where where are you with Foreman's uh, potential? Uh, I mean, the Falcons are so bad. Uh, and uh, Chuba, even if Chuba is back, I mean, a full practice on Tuesday, that that's interesting. That you know, And he had the limited practices the other week. Uh, but Deonta Foreman, after what he has done for this team, it's hard to imagine they don't give him most of the, at least the early carries and early carries against the Atlanta Falcons. You can, you can be very successful. Do not expect 118 and three this week against the Atlanta Falcons, but he Foreman to me looks like a usable running back too. Yeah, I would agree. Cordero, a must start in this game. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Cordero came right back into the fold after missing four weeks, was 13 for 44, two touchdowns, and uh, just one reception. So the touchdowns really helped. The They said they were going to limit him. They did. I mean, Tyler Algier had a nice game as well, but Patterson should get more work in uh, this game. Yeah, I think Tyler Algier is probably the most interesting name in this game outside of uh, Lockjaw. So Tyler <laughs> oh, Algier. No. no. Did um, you get good feedback on that? Yeah, I think the people like the Lockjaw. Um, <laughs> the people I'm referring to is Kyle. <laughs> they don't like Lockjaw as in the issue. No, 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 no. Yeah. That's, that's awful. Like uh, Just like Terrace Marshall Jr. Um, no, but Tyler Algier, is he, he has played his way into a permanent role, I believe. When you saw the season open up and Cordero was awesome, he was still not, you know, he it took an injury ahead of him before he got that, like, huge workload. I don't think they want to give him, a, you know, 25 carries. Uh, that's not their game plan. Obviously, injury can dictate that. But I think Tyler Algier is good for double-digit carries in this game. Yeah, he he dipped from 14 to 10 last week, but he had a 44-yard run and almost hit the 100-yard mark. Just one catch. He was 
he has been at times uh, targeted, but uh, it'll be. I mean, it's a risky play. Would you rather play Chuba or Algier? Algier. Chuba coming back off of the ankle injury and the success that Foreman had last time these two teams played. Um, that's close, though. No longer existing on the plane of fantasy existence. Drake London. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you need to just not think about that at all. DJ Moore, disappointing. <laughs> because you will get horrifically angry. Yeah, I mean, it's just not... It's not an. This is what the Falcons are. Why target share can't be the only thing you look at. Yeah, I mean you have to you have to take that into consideration with the team and the offense as a whole. It's just one piece. But even still, seven. He had seven targets last week, and it turned into three for twenty three. He had five targets the week before that in the big bonanza of a game against Carolina. It was four for thirty one. Not all, all, all the all evidence targets, you need. Not all targets are made the same, and Mariota targets aren't good. They're yeah. just not the all the all the downfield targets to Kyle Pitts sucked. All the targets to Drake London sucked. It's They're the, just the number eight overall pick. Yeah, what are you doing? Well, I mean, they threw the ball to him just poorly, <laughs> right? Like uh, seven targets is is enough, but uh, hey. you just want better targets going his way. I think DJ Moore is an absolutely great play. Um, I do worry a little bit about the rain if it gets. Um, too bad, but we, I, we saw him 11 targets two weeks ago against Atlanta, 152 yards. Uh, Last week was disappointing because they were down the entirety of the game. He ends up just two for 24. You Cincinnati got, beat the tar out of they them. They did. You got the bad P.J. Walker. Like P.J. Walker can be, can be very good for fantasy football and can be just an absolute destruction. Yeah, I think, I think it's as risky as D.J. Moore always is, right? Yeah. I mean – there's never been a game that didn't seemingly line up for DJ Moore to be good. Mm -hmm. It feels like. So he, I, I definitely think he could replicate and have a big game. Um, two weeks ago, he had that monster hail Mary touchdown to end the ball game. Um, had a, you know, 152 yards. Yeah. AJ Terrell still not practicing right now for the Falcons. Yeah, that's they, big news. They just don't have people that can really stop DJ Moore. I, I, I don't think they have like PJ the, Walker, the, the <laughs> sure. Uh, it, it's certainly, um, like, what do you mean when you say he's a good play then? Where do you think he finishes this week? I think he finishes as a wide receiver two, and, a, and pretty much every wide receiver two should be started. Kyle Pitts did play well against Carolina two he's, weeks ago. He's there. Kyle Pitts or Greg D Greg D. Oh no, <laughs> I don't like this question. Uh, Let's see. So we have nine targets in that game you were talking about, Andy. It turned into five for 80 and a score. Seven targets against the Chargers, two for 27. So, I mean, just the yeah, the, the targets were bad in that Charger game, it, it, it would seem. I'm going to go – I'm going to go with Greg D. Uh. Talking about Kyle Pitts is not fun. I tried to help no, everybody. It's really I, not. I moved him. It's really, help. really, really not. Be when you – Five for eighty and a touchdown is sensational. Yeah, for a tight end, there are not many tight ends out there that can even have the opportunity to do that. Knowing he could do it every week, and they don't feature him is so frustrating. Let's jump into the mailbag and blitz some trade questions. Mailbag. mailbag. Instagram question from Muzzy Bear ninety three. I was offered Jalen Waddle. And Zeke for Ooh. Dalvin Cook in a PPR league. Should I take it? Uh, yes. I I'm a I'm a probably yes yeah. unless you have no other running back depth. I'm a I'm a probably yes too. Sure. Jalen Waddle is worth it. He's so good. And yet I heard that you declined a very interesting dynasty trade relating to Jalen Waddle. Uh oh. Yes, I did. I heard that yesterday, and uh -oh. I was actually very surprised because I. What's the offer? I might go send it. <laughs> Uh, the the trade offer was, I believe, Jalen Waddle and a pick for Ceedee Lamb. Uh, what? Yeah, yeah, and I was shocked to hear that what? it was declined. I th I think there was more in that trade. I don't remember. There better it, be. But that's uh, crazy, man. Well, it, I I do think Ceedee Lamb is so in in a in a vacuum startup draft. Which one would you Jaylen take? Jalen Waddle, Waddle. Hmm. by a, a lot. lot. Okay. Interesting. 
by it, Dallas is adding somebody for sure because they just I don't think CD Lamb could be that guy. Waddle is that dude. Waddle is amazing. Yeah, uh, one of my favorite dynasty players. And uh, interesting. So you're you're still bullish on CD Lamb I, to become what we have hoped for the last five years or whatever it's been. <laughs> uh, Any day now. Yeah, I mean CD CD Lamb's been good. Yes, but Jalen Waddle has been elite. Jalen Waddle has certainly been better than CeeDee Lamb this year. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dalvin Cook for A.J. Brown. Jeremy wants to know. I mean, the, the it's value. It's fine. It's fair. Yeah, if you the need value a, is there. Need a wide receiver. Zach Graham, 85. C.D. Lamb for Damian Pierce in a PPR league. C.D. Lamb. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's a fair trade. I it, mean, this, it's this fair. Is, but PPR bumps it to me to C.D. Sure. Lamb. Instagram question, Jason. MKJR419 wants to know. Okay. D hop for Jalen Hurts. Oh, interesting. Um, right now, quarterbacks are fascinating in fantasy football this year because I do feel like there's a handful that you pretty much need to compete. Um, usually it's like, oh, find this guy off of waivers, that guy off of waivers, but there's a few that just have a ceiling you can't reach. Um, those are the teams it seems like it's going to be in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, it, unless you have a path for grabbing someone like Tua, who I think has a, has a really nice uh, ceiling and could be uh, easily acquired, I don't want to give up a Jalen Hurts, but D-Hop is awesome. So I think it's, I think it's fair value. Um, if I was drafting, I would draft Hopkins right now ahead of Hurts. Because you would just take the, the replacement value at quarterback. Exactly. A reminder, since it's waivers day, check your waiver wire. See who was dropped. And a reminder again, the Spotify Live party room today, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. Tomorrow we have Never Not Working. We've got the matchups. We've got the starts of the week. The whole kit and caboodle, so join us there. Jointhefoot.com. Support the podcast. Get access to premium tools. The Discord. All that good stuff. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.